Today is project day at the JV studio and I've got this QNAP here. In fact, I've got a QNAP with some hard drives that I'm about to get into, but first I'm going to enjoy myself a little nacho taco. Obviously I haven't opened the box yet, but from what the printout tells me, QNAP has sent me one of their QNAP TS 435A ribs. 435, yep, that's what matches on the box. And we also have ourselves four eight terabyte uh, Seagates. So I'm gonna unbox this stuff and uh, start to get to work. So here's what the front of it looks like. Uh, you can see it's got the four hot swap bays. But what actually has me really fascinated, it's what's on the frickin' back. Look at that. Do you see what I see? Yeah, there's uh, there's some ethernet there. That's awfully nice. But no, look. I don't know if that's picking up. That might be, it might be too dark. There's two frickin' HDMI ports. Two HDMI ports. And it looks like microphones in. These are microphone jacks. An external power supply. I'm already kind of intrigued about this box. Seagate NAS hard drives. Smart. Eight terabytes each. Honestly, exactly what I would have gone with myself if I picked them out personally. I'm about to turn it on for the first time and just for good measure I've hooked up HDMI and USB as well. I have no idea if it's gonna put anything out to the display, but I wanna catch it if it does. So I'm gonna just connect the power, off to the races. I forgot to plug in the power brick. System is booting. Each drive's lighting up. Now according to the instructions, I'm supposed to like scan some sort of QR code and then have it discover my QNAP. That feels pretty proprietary. I'm not so sure that's gonna work. Zoop -doop -doop -doop. We have HDMI output, which makes me think I'm not gonna rely on some sort of weird Windows app to discover this thing. I'm saying no to multimedia features. Select the disk configuration you want. Come on, you gotta see this. Select the disk configuration you want. Create static volumes, create thick volumes, create a thin volume, configure later. Whoa. Uh, I like things thick. I also like things static when it comes to my storage, but I need it thin. Damn it. I went with static because I don't want to break the drives up into multiple volumes. Uh, but look at this here. Please select, so then I can go in and I can either say configure it later, add as a member disk. Obviously, I want to add all of these. Tempted to do a hot spare, but it doesn't look like that's a configuration option. Oh, once you dedicate these to the pool, it automatically allows you to set up hot spares. That's nice. If I was smart, I would do that. All right, I'm clicking next. So we can go with, please select the RAID type. Estimate available space would be 23 terabytes at uh, RAID 5. If I do RAID 6, it's 15 terabytes. And if I do a RAID 10, 15 terabytes. But if I do a RAID 0, 31 terabytes. Oh, that would be so nice. But nope, RAID 5 will be it for us today. Encryption, nice. Scan bad block, that's also nice. All right, so it sets up with a default admin, admin username, gives me an IP, and uh, tells me my network status. I am not in Casablanca. That is hilarious. Oh, interesting. Using Extended 4 for the uh, file system. Doesn't seem to be a way for me to get up there and change Casablanca right now, but I'm betting I can change that after setup. Look at that. It's asking me if I want to install the hybrid desk station, which is apparently like a, a desktop with Chrome and Kodi and it uses the onboard HDMI to send out to your TV or a monitor. I'm gonna skip that because I don't need that, but if you were tight on hardware and you needed an extra system, I could see using this from time to time or connecting it directly to your television and have it be in your media center 
with all local playback, I could actually see myself doing that down the road. But for right now, I'm gonna skip it to keep the install lean. All right, so we have ourselves, geez, if I could type, we would have, we have ourselves kernel 3.19.8. I'm not seeing any sure signs that it's really Ubuntu. Uh, it just looks like a really minimal Linux install to me. I imagine some of you are wondering, hey Chris, why a QNAP? I mean, why not just build a rig? Use Open Media Vault or FreeNAS, something like that, or just plain Linux if that's what you really want. And I think you might be right. Um, why a QNAP? I'm, I'm honestly a bit skeptical. I'm curious to see what a product shipping Ubuntu can do, but I have a rather unique situation that I'm trying to make my file server accommodate. I have some future projects coming up that are going to require a ton of storage, but that's not the tricky part. I've got to find a way to put all of that storage in there. You see, the thing about an RV, it's not like there's a master bedroom I could stuff this all into, or a basement, or anything like that. I've got to find a space somewhere in there to fit a lot of storage. And now because I'm going to try to fit all of this gear under a dinette booth seat that's enclosed, I'm getting more and more concerned about heat. And one of the ways I can reduce heat is by having fewer rigs. Not only that, but these things are going to draw battery power when I'm camping, so less machines equal less power draw. So the QNAP appeals to me because it's apparently, although I haven't tried it yet, supports virtualization using KVM. It supports media hosting. It uses Linux. I'm led to believe. I haven't confirmed yet. I'm led to believe it uses Ubuntu Linux under the hood. So it's all things I might set up on a rig if I built it separately. A NUC attached to a storage control over iSCSI or NFS. This brings it all together in one box, which in theory will draw less power, produce less heat, and give me less things to manage in a tiny space. Ha! Huh. I just logged in. I'm installing updates, and I see one of the top bug fixes right here is Dirty Cow. They've apparently rolled this fix out a few a little bit ago, and uh, I've already got it. That's nice. Now let's take a look at the interface to manage the QNAP. It puts its IP right up on its main screen, so it's easy to figure out what it is. You log in with the basic admin admin, of course, change it later. Okay, we've got four drives. They all seem to be working. 10% optimizing, 21 terabytes total capacity. This is a better interface than I was expecting. Got to take a look at the virtualization guide here in a second, but uh, let's take a look at the control panel. Holy crap, look at all this stuff. Network virtual switch, firmware update. External device, SNMP, domain controller, transcode management. That is so cool. To speed up transcoding process, please go to the App Center and install the Codex Pack. Okay. This Codex Pack is an advanced proprietary hardware technology that can significantly improve the performance of transcoding tasks on your NAS. Yes. Yes, I would like to install that very much. Yes, yes, I would like to. Yes, I want that. Yes, please. I agree to anything you tell me. Holy crap, look at all this stuff. Linux Station? Linux Station is a standard Linux desktop platform that allows QTS, that allows you to use QTS while seamlessly using Linux on an HDMI display. Simply connect a keyboard and mouse in an LXC container. So they're sticking a desktop inside an LXC container, so it's not virtualization, it's faster, but it's still contained. Gmail Backup? Object Storage Server? QNAP Object Storage Server allows QNAP Turbo NAS to support data access using S3 and OpenStack compatible object storage pools. <laughs> that is so cool! So you got your standard uh, like uh, surveillance camera plugin support, uh, S3 backup support. That's kind of typical for these kinds of things. And of course, your Plex Media Server. Uh, Roselio Sync, huh? MB. Hey, we got MB. It's got an Etherpad light server. It's got an Etherpad light server. That's huge. That is huge for me. Oh, man, this is going to save me so much time. All these little things I've been thinking about setting up, and this thing's just got them built in. Virtualization station. This is it. The virtualization station is comp I'm so excited. I am so excited I can't even speak right now. The virtualized date. The virtualization station is composed of storage management and virtualization technology and allows you to install VMs on the Turbo NAS running Windows, Linux, Unix, and even Android. Android on my NAS? Now I just kind of want to do it. Virtualiz virtualization station allows users to open the data on the Turbo NAS directly through the VMs. Yes! Yes! Yes!
Yes! Yes! Woohoo! Yee! Hmm. I got a lot of stuff for backup. You know, I I think I expected things like Plex and a few backup scripts, but this, the app availability, blew me away. Like, this is the thing I was looking forward to the least on this rig, because I just was going to set up some VMs and install everything myself, but this, I love that it's using LXC containers, and I love the availability. Like, this is these are really good projects, some of which I've completely forgotten about. I can't wait to play with some of this stuff. And some of these things, it's making me think I could use this NAS for stuff I hadn't considered before. Now the part I've been waiting for, the virtualization station setup. Looks pretty straightforward, just a couple of options to configure. I like that I can set up multiple network adapters if I want, so I could have dedicated one of these adapters to the VM. I just don't have it plugged in and activated right now. You know, really thinking about it, I don't think I'll need more than one or two VMs. With the apps that this thing has available that run in containers, that's probably a more efficient way to do it. So there might only be a couple of things I need in the VM now. This is going to be really, really nice, and most of it's all going to be work-specific. All new network design. No, no need for extra network interfaces or VMs. Look at this interface. This is really slick. Hmm. So they have default VM configurations for me to pick from. Look at that. A mini would be perfect. Okay, I have my basic virtual machine set up, so now you're wondering what's next? Well, I kind of have a unique opportunity to really test this thing. I'm about to get on the road and go to Berkeley, California for Meet BSD. So I'm gonna take this home to the RV, set it all up there, change the defaults like the time zone and the password, and actually production test it on the road, and then I'll report back in part two how that went, how it performed, and the limitations I may or may not have ran into.